Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about the difference between interface files or in C++ we call them header files, the things that usually end in .h or .hpp and sometimes .inc for include. And well, these are the files that we're including. So how are those different from the .cpp files, which are the implementation files? So let's go ahead and look at this on the whiteboard and then go ahead and dive into some code to learn about the differences. So as you can see, an interface file has a typical extension. It doesn't really matter what it is, but by convention, it's .hpp or .h. And most commonly, your implementation when using pure C++ is .cpp, but occasionally you'll see people use .cxx, or if you're a C programmer, you're familiar with the .c extension. So the idea is for our interface files, we basically have a library or our API. So these can be things like the uh, types that we declare, their user-defined types, maybe some functions, and as we get into object-oriented programming, classes, structs, etc. And these are just the declarations, okay? Saying that these things exist. We don't know how they actually do the work, but we do know that we have these available as tools. So again, that's the idea of the interface. It's the high level view of the code that you're including. So for example, we've been including IO stream to do various tasks related to IO, like see out for instance, to print things to the screen. And you've seen me do that and include this library. And we've just sort of taken for granted that, yeah, it'll do the right thing. And we don't really care how it does it in a sense, or at least not yet we don't care. We might care for performance reasons or debuggability or other things, but you know, for the most part, we just want to include this library and us as a client want to just be able to make the right function call or use the right object to do the right thing. And that's where the implementation portion, this part here, comes into play here. So let me go ahead and sort of go down here. And this is where you have the actual logic, your if statements, your curly braces, maybe a for loop, etc. This is where, and let me write this a little bit neater, where work is done. And again, this is the actual implementation. Now, sometimes us as programmers, sometimes we have a view of the actual implementation here. So the implementation, implementation, and again, that's the .cpp file. And sometimes we don't have the actual implementation. Sometimes it's already been compiled for us, and when we include it, it is linked into the code and all glued together a little bit magically for us. We'll talk about how linkers work later in the series, uh, but that's the idea with the implementation. And again, there's good reasons to separate out these files. For instance, you might want to, again, not care about the actual implementation. Maybe you're using a proprietary intellectual property that you know, some company wants to protect, but they're happy to make it for free so long as you don't know the trade secrets. Or maybe that's for a security reason, so that folks don't know how an algorithm works, perhaps in a game, for instance, and so they can't cheat in the game. So just some examples as to reasons why you might want to not have to always recompile the source. And again, the reason that we're going to get to why it's useful to have this separation is for things like compilation, where I can have all of my implementation already compiled on my platform, and then just look at the declarations and include things as needed. Again, that's essentially what we've been doing when we include the IO stream. We can see the implement the interface, excuse me, that tells us we have these functions available and the implementation, uh, it's compiled in the standard library somewhere and is brought in. So enough background, let's go ahead and just create a little library ourselves. And what I'm going to do is create a HPP file or a header file and an implementation. And let's go ahead and give it a name here. Let's go ahead and just split this window here. And I'll just call it uh, mikemath.hpp. And then let's go ahead and create the uh, implementation file here, mikemath.cpp. So by convention, we usually give the names of the header and interface the same thing. 
just the extension is different. It just makes things a little bit easier to follow. And just so you're aware, in my Vim, you can see the file name here. I'm just going to write it in a comment. So it's a little bit easier for you to always see here my actual implementation on the left side. So let's go ahead and just label that so we can keep things straight and the actual interface here, the interface. Okay, so that's our code here. So again, what's the interface? Well, that's just going to tell us what things are available. So this is just going to be a tiny math library. So maybe we have some functions like sum, and I have a and b, and that's it. It's just declaring, hey, this function exists, but we don't know what to do with it yet. We don't know the proprietary or the secret sauce of how this actual algorithm works. And that's where we come into the implementation, and we actually implement this function. So I say sum, int a, int b, and well, just return the sum of a plus b. Now, how do these two files work together? Well, typically what we have to do is include the header file, mikemath.hpp, into our implementation. And what this is essentially doing is the same thing as just copying and pasting in, in sum with the whole uh, function signature here. So when I include a file, it's no different than just copying and pasting the contents of this file right into here. Okay, so that's it. So no more magic there. And then we have our declaration here, and then we can have the definition elsewhere. But again, if you're a user of this library, you only see this and you say, okay, I can sum two numbers just by passing in the two arguments, integers, and I return an integer here. Now, there is one more step that we have to do here. Otherwise, we can sometimes run into a problem, and that's guard to make sure that, well, if I include Mike Math HPP multiple times in my project, that I don't keep repeating this function definition. So typically, what I do is I define the header file here, something like this, and usually in all caps by uh, convention. And I'll use the preprocessor to say if not defined Mike Math HPP then just define this symbol and in endif here. Okay, so that way this file will only get included once in our whole project. And I'll do a few examples to try to break things here in a moment. Okay, so are we done? Can we actually use our sum function? Well, let's go ahead and test it out here. And just for uh, clarity, I'm actually just gonna rename this to add um, instead of sum, it's doing the same thing here. Uh, but we only have two parameters here. Um, so let's go ahead and try to use our function here. So I'm going to use standard uh, C out here, which is available from IO stream. I'll add two numbers, maybe seven and two. And let's go ahead and try this out and go ahead and think about it for a moment. If you think this is going to work. Uh, well, let's go ahead down to our compilation. I'll use G plus plus. We have the main file. I'll put the program. And if I hit enter, um, well, of course, as you probably predicted, uh, add has not been declared in the scope. We don't know about the add function until we include it in our main file. Okay. And what am I including here? Um, I'm including mikemath.hpp because that's where the actual add function has been defined. Okay. So let's go ahead and recompile this. And hmm, now I'm getting a different error here. So if I scroll up, I'll see that, well, we just didn't know this function existed. Now we're sort of aware that it exists because we included the header file, but we still don't know how the add function actually works. Because remember, when I include, it's just doing a copy and paste. So if I have access to the source code in my project, I need to actually compile mikemath.cpp. And that's going to do the magic with the compiler and actually take this code, convert it into machine code and say, oh, okay, this is how we add two numbers here. Okay, so let me go ahead and enter. And we can go ahead and run this and test it out and you'll see the value nine here. Okay, so that's how the interface is different from the implementation. And again, it's important to separate out these uh, two different concepts. 
A common mistake that I will see folks do is they'll include a CPP file when they are first beginning because they'll say, well, Mike said it's just a copy and paste, so I can just do something like this. And you're going to get all sorts of weird errors because, again, you're including the actual file here, pretending it is a interface. So it's bringing in this code, copy and paste it in a main, and compiling the add function. And well, we're also doing that on our command line. So we get this duplicate or multiple definitions error from your compiler, um, or rather your linker, where it's just going to say, hey, there's really two functions here. OK, so that's something to be aware of. We never or very rarely have I ever seen a reason to include a .cpp file. So always, 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 and let me write this out, always include header files, never .cpp files. OK, I have very rarely seen that. And maybe that's if you're generating code or doing something else, that, that but uh, that's just not the purpose. Now, on occasion, you will see things like folks doing header only files or libraries, and that's for simplicity. But again, I would urge you to build a good habit now and split up your files based off of the implementation and the interface. Because think about it, what is the other advantage here that I can do? Well, what I can actually do here in my project here is I can actually just run G++ and let's see if I happen to just compile the main file like this. Okay, hmm, what happened? Well, when I just compile the main file, I get this main.o object file. And that's interesting. We haven't seen that before in this series, uh, to the best of my knowledge. Maybe you've seen it in one of my other videos. <laughs> but let's go ahead and do the same thing with our uh, math library. So my math.cpp. And well, now I see I have a micmath.o. So now I can actually compile these using main.o, micmath.o, and output the program as needed, and run it, and it works. OK, so again, what happened here? Well, my compiler is able to compile these files separately and do this sort of separate compilation. And if I haven't made any changes to micmath, and I haven't made any changes to main.o, or maybe I've only made changes to one of these two files, typically the one that we own, main.cpp, for example, I don't have to spend a lot of time recompiling everything. So that's really one of the major advantages of having this separate implementation, because I can just compile it once and then compile it in my project if I need this add function, other data structures, and so on. So if you've worked in other languages where you've separated out files and then maybe hit in your IDE, a build tool, this is essentially what's going on. It's able to save time by just building the actual files that have changed. And well, I've just shown you how to do this manually on the command line. So from a time saving standpoint, it's really important to be able to do this. And secondly, from a project management standpoint, it's just really a lot cleaner if you can separate out your projects into multiple files. As an antidote, I know somebody who would once write 10,000 lines of code in a single file, and that was fine while he was just prototyping the work. But eventually, once our files get too big, you want to separate them out into different categories of things, uh, your math functions, your input-output functions, and so on. All right, so there's one more thing I want to talk about, and maybe you've caught on to this, and it's this idea of why is Mike math in quotation marks and IO stream in these uh, less than or greater than signs, these sort of wickets here? Well, whenever you see an include file with the quotation marks, that is including the file and you're specifying the path. So for example, this is the actual file path that I have provided. So I could also, and just to prove that this works here, Pass in the whole file path here. And I'll go ahead and make this bigger so you can see it on one line. And let's go ahead and uh, let's just compile all these files together like we previously did. And you'll see that works. So I can pass in the absolute file path. Although if I pass in the absolute file path, that is the whole file path, this isn't going to compile on your machine, only mine, because, well, this is my structure here Dropbox, C code, et cetera, et cetera. 
So usually when you see the uh, quotation marks, you'll see a relative file path here. So it'll be like dot slash, you know, dot dot maybe to move up or down a directory um, and so on. Or maybe you have an include file and so on. Okay, so that's one way to handle things. The other thing, now what makes this one different with the brackets or excuse me, not the brackets, but the uh, less than and the greater than sign here, the little wickets, is that this file can be found on some sort of system file path. So for example, if I echo out on Linux, my path variable, these might be some of the locations the compiler looks at to actually find this file. Now let's actually use find to figure out where IO stream is. And I can give you a little bit of a hint or you can research this, but it's usually in the uh, include uh, directory in your user path if you're on Linux. If you're on Windows or Mac, you can find the equivalent. And let's go ahead and find IO stream. Uh, oops, we just want the uh, name of the file here. And these are the potential locations that it can be in. Now I have many different C++ compilers, but let's just go ahead and CD into the user include C++10 directory. And if I do an ls here, well, we'll see a lot of the different libraries, including IO stream. So I can go ahead into IO stream here using Vim. And well, this is kind of cool. I can actually see what's in the standard library in IO stream. And you can read the files and truly understand what is going on here. So you can see that it includes some other libraries here. We've got uh, the header guards, which we talked about, which are important. Again, so you can include this file multiple times without worrying. The header guards protect and make sure your file's only included once. That includes for standard libraries. And you can see some of the different objects that are available and so on. Okay, so that's the idea there. And I think that's pretty cool. Okay, folks, so just to give you a quick recap and put everything together here, we were able to create our own library here, Mike Math, by separating out the interface, which again, just describes what functions or objects or data types, which we'll soon learn about exist. And then we do the implementation in the .cpp files. We always only include the header files 99.9999% um, of the time. <laughs> that's, that's why we do that. Um, and typically, again, we avoid putting any implementation code in our header files. And we now know the difference between things that have the brackets, or excuse me, the wickets here, the less than and the greater than sign, and the quotation marks. All right. So folks, I hope that was a interesting lesson for you. And you now understand the difference between the interface and the implementation or these header files uh, that folks talk about. Or maybe if you're coming from C, this will be familiar. But if you're coming from... Uh, Java or other languages like that, not as much. Now we are going to split up our files sometimes because we're going to be talking about classes and building our own user defined types. I briefly snuck that in so some uh, previous lessons if you've been following these lessons in order on the playlist. Um, so I hope you're excited about that. So make sure you don't miss those lessons. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the channel and I make sure that you don't miss those lessons by subscribing. All right, thanks for your folks time. We'll uh, see you in the next one here.